This is brought to you by the Location One Building, 1734 East 63rd Street. When you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Carlos Nelson with What's Up Kansas City. And today we have uh, some artists, I would like to say. Uh, they've uh, been on the show uh, in the past, but they just got finished doing a major mural over in KCK. Who do we have here? Hi, Anita Easterwood here with my dad, Lucky Easterwood. Hey. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, which one of y'all going to uh, start the conversation off? about the, the, the concept of the mural and, and, and tell some history about uh, what you were doing over there. We'll post the mural later on in the interview. Uh, which one of you are, uh, can take that on right now? You, that you want me to do it? Go ahead, Anita. So, uh, okay, so starting at the beginning, if you are a Kansas City native or even familiar with the area, you know that Quindaro is a prominent neighborhood. Uh, it's even a part of, or it was a part of the um, Underground Railroad. So it's always had rich history. My dad did a mural down there uh, years ago. And so his mom lived there. Like we were all, we all grew up there. So Quindaro was the name been. of that mural that uh, uh, he did in the past? It was called Something to Live For. It was off of, what was it? Seventh and Quindaro? I always forget the street. That's great. Seventh and Quindaro. Um, same theme, really, when you think about it. it. Had a group of kids and it was titled Something to Live, Live For. That was done 1998. And so it's still there. And when all the things popped off with the death of George Floyd and all the civil unrest and all the protests, my dad said that he wanted to do another mural in honor of the Black Lives Matter movement, also on Quindaro. Um, and he talked to the owner of the building off of 18th and Quindaro. And we, next thing you know, we got it together. Like from the time that he told me about the idea to it coming to like an existence, it was like a week that we, he told me one week we were painting the next week. So it was a really fast turnaround. He wanted it to be something again for the youth. Uh, a young kid writing affirmations, like positive affirmations on the ground, you know, saying, I will breathe, I will live, you know, just declaring victory. So that's really the, the background behind it. Hey, hey Lucky, uh, talk about uh, that, when that epiphany came to you. Oh, yeah. well, it was the uh, combined efforts of the young people. How uh, they were enthused about the protest and the events going on and I just joined them. I'm saying the concept of what what that would look like, what the mural would look like and what it would represent. Because how I found out about it, I I uh was looking at I thought it was a national news program or or something regional and they were talking about Quindaro, and as your daughter was saying, the history of Quindaro, and that this was going to be a a a major uh, step in reviving and uh, uh, illuminating mm -hmm. some of the things that uh, have taken place. And as your daughter said, that was uh, Quindaro Underground Railroad. I know I just got finished doing an interview. I think it was Saturday with. Wilson's, uh, Gary Wilson up there on Quindaro. Uh, so uh, how did you go about uh, with the financing of, of that mural? Well, I need to talk about that more. All right. Uh, yeah, so um, we put up a GoFundMe and we said, hey, this is what we're trying to do. We want to do something to uplift the community. Uh, we're asking for donations for uh, materials and we got it. It was, and it, we were overwhelmed. Like we didn't think it would happen that way. We didn't think we would raise all the money, 
But I mean, it took off like wildfire. Everybody, my friends, family, former coworkers, um, everyone shared it and everyone pitched in. And it was because of that, that we were really able to do it because if we didn't get the donations, we were gonna have to come out of pocket. And you know, you're familiar with art. That stuff is not cheap, you know? Um, the thing so, is, <laughs> just to paint your daggone walls in the house, cause it's not yeah. cheap. Let's more buy special paint that right. uh, uh, will pass the test of time. I, I right, know that was right. super expensive. Yes, right. You want to have quality. You don't want something that'll come down the next year. So uh, we wanted to do it right, you know. Um, and so it was because of the donations that it was even able to happen as fast as it did. Who were the artists that worked on the mural? Was it just you and your dad or did what give, give a rundown on that? Yeah. So now, you know, and it's no secret, my dad is the master muralist, right? I'm not making any claims of that at all. My background is portrait art. And so I even told him, I'm like, look, if, if we're going to do this, like, you got to show me every step of the way because I, I, I am the student here. Um, and so we helped. He had the initial idea and then I helped fine tune the drawing and then we executed it together. And, but it was really me following his lead. You know, he would tell me, because when you're doing things on bigger scale, it's a whole new ball game. And so things that I thought was right, he would come back and show me, well, this is how you do it to make the shadow pop. So you can tell like, this is the person bending over. I mean, um, it, it was me following his lead and just watching, watching the hey, example that he was saying. Hey, hey, Lucky, how different you, you working on this mural versus the one that you did previously, what was the difference in uh, the workmanship? Uh, have they come out with new new paints, with, with anything new? Tell, tell me, what was the atmosphere on your first uh, mural and, and the atmosphere on this? In your well, mind? the first mural was much more complicated. The texture was different. The technique was different. Uh, the detail was much more involved. So it took a, a longer turnaround. Many more hands were involved in the structure of it. We had to get the face properly set. And we had to do all the preparations like it needed to it for long life. So we used the best materials. And even though it lasted 20 something years, it was only for the last five years, but we got about a good 15 years now is up for. How many people worked on that first mural? Approximately, if you can just, re you know, I well, want to compare what you did then and how many people worked on, on, on the present one. Well, the preparation is where the hands came in handy. The mm -hmm. Volunteers showed up when the project was uh, conceived. Let me turn you up a little bit. Hear you a little better now. When the project was conceived, uh, people were enthused about it because it was the first major mural in this area. Come on, so, 1998, right? Or seven? Uh, I think it was 96. Oh, 96. Okay. Yeah, yeah there was a lot of excitement about it, and a big event happened, and news media carried on for about six months, you know, for different aspects and the different uh, uh, uses that the mural was able to provide then with backdrops for PSAs and things of that nature. So it was very useful at that time and very appreciated. How many people helped prep the wall? Uh, I'd say it was only about six of us. How many How many, how many me. did you all have prepping this? What you it did? was me and no, him. No, there was no prep on this one. <laughs> yeah. We just dealt with the service we had. Yeah, the he prepping did Prepping was a process. Prep Excuse me? I was saying you did the primer, but on the old, the one in 1996, they did a whole process to smooth it. We didn't yeah. do that on this one. It was just straight because, primer. Right. Uh, you, you did like what we're doing now. Uh, we're getting the job done with the interview without uh, all the expense. Well, right. Exactly. And, 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 and that's, what that, uh, that, that's where, Lucky, your experience really probably came in uh, yeah. uh, from a financial standpoint, from an artistic standpoint, and, and all of that because – and, and what I do, I've got a guy named uh, Aubrey Williams that has really showed me how 
to to cut through the chase on interviews and 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 uh, without a whole lot of editing and and so forth. And from what your daughter and you are describing, uh, you you use one half of the resources on this uh, mural than that was used on the, the first one. Correct. Yep. What, what 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 did you use any new techniques? What new techniques did you use on this project? Well, I have a different bunch of techniques. I kind of, I'm from the old school, so I have to adjust to whatever the situation is. If there's a surface that needs our work on it, I have to adjust to make it work, and there's different variables how it goes. You, oh. hey, you, you did, was the other one smooth? This was brick, wasn't it? Correct. The other one was brick, too. It was the same, same, same structure, same surface, yeah. Oh, buildings. Yeah, uh, this one had deeper grooves that we didn't fill in. The other one, the grooves were filled in. Yeah, and for this one, um, he we he did a graphing technique, and just like what you said, Carlos, due to his experience, he was allowed he was able to expedite a lot of the process. So we put up um, like points of reference, used math, made a block like a graph on this on the smaller image, and then put little. X's up on the wall and then use that to like highlight this is where his elbow should go this is where his shoe goes and filled it in from there did you uh did y'all think about boy uh having any interns to to to, to scoop that knowledge up some younger oh it's Okay, you got to remember. Time wasn't things. on our side. Right, time right, wasn't right. on the side, and time is money. You know, like the longer we would have been working, the longer, like the more expenses would have well, been. Well, I, I, I understand. And yeah. I think it was starting to rain in a bunch of crap uh, during that time also. Yes, and it was also, we're still in a pandemic. So that's a big reason why we couldn't just open it up to people right, to come right. down and actually help hands on. Because if they were, to, they were to get sick, you know, that's a responsibility that we had to take. So um, we, yeah, well, it, it was limited painting, because of that. Uh, tell me on a percentage basis, how much did you paint, Anita? Who, me? Yeah, you. I would say I did like 30. 30? Mm -hmm. She had say? a lot of interviews to do, and a lot of media. Uh, yeah. Uh, right, that's how I found out about the project. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so, uh, Lucky, how did you feel about the project and, and doing 60% of the work or, or 70? 70? <laughs> I'm just glad I didn't have to do 100. <laughs> Uh, so did, did you learn any new things? Did any new did. problems pop, pop up? Talk about that as an artist. Well, if I did make a mistake, nobody would ever know it. <laughs> you know, that's the beauty of being an artist. Nobody can ever tell when you mess up. How so, do you think that the, the overall uh, uh, KCK community received the project? And then no, tell it, me what you think the overall Kansas City community received it. And do you think uh, that the uh, black community really appreciates what you've uh, done with this? This is what I tell you right here. Oh, don't, don't, don't hurt nobody, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's love. Yeah. That's appreciation. Uh, so, Lucky, what have you been doing with your time as it relates to your profession? Well, I've traveled the country, uh, putting art in several states, so I'm proud of that. Um, I have permanent work in Atlanta, I have permanent work in South Carolina, and several other cities that I've ventured to that I can't quite remember because I've done so much. Tell me this. Uh, what do you see on the horizon for uh, painting murals uh, in general? You've been it's, a lot of, it's, a, it's a lot of murals going on. I've seen some beautiful work around Kansas City. I was surprised at the talent that we have here that we really don't know about unless we get out and venture. But uh, 
I think it's on a, a pretty good roll right now. And how do you feel? How, how, the, the, the other thing, which uh, when this rare occasion happens where I can work with my son on something, Excuse me, I have to how just do you feel? Again, I have to uh, turn up the volume again. Excuse me. Right. <laughs> how do you kinda, feel working with your zone. daughter? As a oh, I, I my daughter. It was it was a great experience. I was I was proud. I, I tell you, I was proud that she was out there with me. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's nothing like a father son, father daughter. Right. Uh, spe you know, especially when you're working on a project, and it seemed like uh, your daughter has a lot of reverence in you, Lucky. <laughs> uh, and 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 what I'm saying. From the last interview, uh, what you do with uh, that those murals and how y'all explain that's that's much different from a portrait. When you when when mm -hmm. you 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 supersizing everything and uh, for the proportionality, uh, Anita, do you think you have that down yet? Whew. Uh if you're asking, like, if someone would be like, hey, could you go do this mural? That's <laughs> what I'm asking. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I don't think, if I did, I think it would take me a very, very long time. You can't get it right in one, one time. This, it was completely different. Like, I can't, I can't stress that enough. Like, it's nothing like a portrait. I enjoyed it. But I think I would need at least three more times before I can say, hey, Did I can do this on my own. Sleep? Did you lose any Yes, I lost sleep. I almost quit after the first day. I said, hold on now. Yeah, she fired me four times. Look, I said, hold on twice. now. You, you quit twice and you yeah, fired twice. four times. Yeah, you yes. got fired four times. Hey, yeah. uh, that was the first week. It, it was, yeah, it was a lot. Because you're also dealing with, like, the weather and it was hot. You know, all these different things that you don't have to deal with, with if, I'm, if I'm just working at home in my studio or like working on a porch, I don't have to deal with all that stuff. And so, yeah, it, it was hard. It was worth it, but it was hard. Well, uh, in closing, what would you have to say, uh, Anita, in your closing statements to your constituents, to the people that donated money and an effort towards that project, what do you have to say to them? And what do you have to say to young artists? Yeah, well, um, I'm just super, super grateful for the support and love to my, from my city. So thank you, Kansas City, Kansas, and everyone else who, who uh, contributed, regardless of what state, but you guys really showed up and showed out, even if you didn't give money. For those who came by and brought us food or just like sent us messages of encouragement, we really, it didn't go unnoticed. So we definitely appreciate that. I think um, it was a responsibility that we have as artists to give back to our community. And we see that it's being appreciated. Every time that someone takes a picture in front of it, they're tagging me or my dad in it. And they're saying, hey, look at this. Like, thank you for this. And so we're we're grateful and i think the point that the message is bigger than the messengers is also showing as well um so yeah i'm just very very happy for the support and all to my to my young artists i would just say just keep growing keep learning new things even if you don't think that that's your thing like i again i'm not a muralist but i worked on a mural doesn't matter if I've never done it before, you know, now I can say that I did it, you know, never be shy to be new at something. It's okay. If you're not good, you just, I feel like the, the creative process is very brutal. And so a lot of young artists kind of give, give up early because they don't see that reward at the end. But I mean, just keep going, just keep going, learn your role and play it. Hey, hey Lucky, uh, what would your closing words be to uh, your fellow artists that are in your your age group that came up in your era, uh, how, uh, talk a little bit about the feel, uh, how you how you look at uh, the art world now, uh, the mural world now. Uh, give me about five minutes of what's on your mind when it comes to art 
how people perceive you, how you're perceiving the environment, and uh, where do you go at the end of this? Where are you going from here? Well, me personally, uh, I don't see myself as a a lot of ins and outs, do's and don'ts. I'm just an artist. And I've always been an artist. That's how I think. So today has been, I mean, these days versus the past, I didn't really pay too much attention till I got older because I thought everybody could do art. You know, I, I say that often, but it's the truth. I thought it was a, you know, just a thing to do till I found the, the meaning and the money. And that's what allowed me to uh, continue to uh, create and to have, I put four kids to college, so it did me well. Uh, tell me this, uh, did you ever go through the starving artist process? No, I, 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 was, I was afraid of that. <laughs> I've heard that uh, and I didn't want to be that. So I choose another venue. I choose you don't want to be in that lane, bro? <laughs> well, I, I kind of, I was in the lane, but I was kind of like, you know, uh, trying to figure out the flow and the, and, the, and the business side of art. That was difficult to do. Finding the business side is the difficult part of, of an artist's job. Because a lot of times it costs to be an artist. That may be hard to understand. You have to pay to go be in places that you don't know if you're going to sell well, and you have to know what product to take to those yeah. venues. And those are learning curves that get very expensive. Very expensive. So you have to, I would say, the secret to that I would give to an artist is find your niche. Mm -hmm. Whatever that niche is, find it. And once you find the niche, then you're well on your way to be identified, recognized, and appreciated, and also paid. Yeah. Hey, 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 Lucky, what you got to say about uh, your daughter? I love my in daughter. General. Yeah. She's a great artist. She's a talented artist. I found that out. <laughs> yeah, she, she's gifted. All right. Well, thanks. All right. That, hey, that, that, that says it all, partner. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Lucky, I'm a, before, uh, I say be, before, uh october i'm coming over there and invite you over to my partner uh gary wilson uh gary yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Gary, see gary, i go gary, back I'm with him i used to own pizza restaurants oh, yeah. when he first started uh and he was with his dad and that was down the street on Qu quindaro yeah, that was many years ago yeah, and he's writing a book i told him he can't keep me out of his book I'm a part. I'm a. I'm an important part of his success. I say that. I don't know if that's true or not. Right. What, what did you do with Gary? I was. I was involved with Gary when he first started. I made all his uh, advertising and, and signage. I had a guy named Walter Rooks that was doing mine over here in KC, uh, Missouri. He was, and he was known as the sign painter. I, I remember I, him, yeah. I, I, I've, I've known of him for many years. I saw Gary some of his ovens and and all of that. Uh, and I'm, man, I'm uh, so uh, uh, excited about meeting you. I've met a lot of artists, but really none, no artist that did the murals and, and really, uh, had the community in mind. You seem like, from your last statements, you got the community in, line, in mind, but you got the business aspect of this uh, pretty much down. It's like with it took, it took a long time romance to get there. without finance. That's correct. It wasn't easy, yeah. but longevity is key. And, and you've been around. I've so been around. As, as we say in closing all the time, uh, when you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Thank you. This program is brought to you by Computerized Auto Search.